Well, hello everyone. It's late. It's almost midnight. I told myself I would record this tomorrow, maybe the next day, but I couldn't sleep, so here I am, getting ready to tell you what's been going on in the wrestling universe, in case you haven't heard or anything, but I'll also share my opinions when it comes down to it. This is my stance with World Wrestling Entertainment and what's going to happen on this channel involving our coverage of World Wrestling Entertainment from here on out. Check 95 here, and of course, like I said in the intro, this is going to be my stance on World Wrestling Entertainment and what's been going on in the backstage and the drama involving with the latest news that's been going on, I would say, since 2021 started, but it kind of started back in 2020. When we first started taking this channel seriously back in December, uh, we had said that we'd start covering wrestling events and UFC events, and course we've kind of slowed down on the coverage of that right before we moved to our new house and everything and we haven't exactly uploaded anything professional wrestling wise probably for several months and it's been about a month since we last covered a UFC event at all and I know there was one UFC event this past Saturday but that's not the point the point of this video is of course World Wrestling Entertainment and my thoughts of what's going on. As some of you wrestling fans know, uh, there was a massive amounts of firings when 2020 started during the pandemic with a lot of superstars, probably about, I would say about 30 plus superstars, losing their jobs because of budget cuts, which I've done some research. Um, that's kind of a lame excuse, I would think. They weren't really hurting during the pandemic financially, but their viewership and ratings have been plummeting um, a lot since before then, nearing and after as of right now. That was kind of like the start of, you know, there's some weird stuff going on, but I never really actually paid attention to it, I guess. Fast forward to 2021, and that's when uh, a lot more uh, stuff, I guess you can say, started dropping like bombs here left and right. Where it stands as of right now, I know there's been one more release since making these notes. So there's been a total of 75 professional wrestlers and backstage personnel that have been released or let go since 2021 started. Mostly because of budget cuts, but there's been a couple here and there that have had their own right and I would say personal reasons, but I'm not going to get into every single firing here. I started really noticing uh, some really bad changes starting when they started releasing people in, uh, I think it was June, either April or June, they started releasing like 10 to 15 people like on a day or like during a week, saying it was mainly because of budget cuts. And on top of that, just some of the promotional stuff. One of the uh, reaction videos that we were going to do for a pay-per-view, I don't remember the name of the pay-per-view, it's kind of blocked in the back of my mind, but the one thing that made us literally stop watching it is still there. Uh, they tried to promote a uh, Netflix movie in the middle of a pay-per-view during a wrestling match, during a rivalry that had nothing to do with the movie or the rivalry itself. They just tied it together because... You know, Dave Batista was in the movie Army of the Dead. For what WWE did for their promotional stuff, it honestly made us stop watching the pay-per-view. And I don't think I have that footage for that reaction anymore. I think I've either lost it or deleted it when I uh, finally transferred everything from my laptop, my old editing stuff, to my new PC setup I have that my roommate had gave, had gave me. And we haven't really covered a wrestling pay-per-view, I think, since then. I mean, we 
we've talked about it, but we just never really had, I guess, the drive to because it's just the product. It's been really tough, like, trying to cover it, trying to set plan dates to watch pay-per-views for you guys to see our reactions to. It's just, like I said, the drive just was never there after that night with the Army of the Dead promotional stuff. I want to get back into it, but it's almost nearly impossible for me wanting to do that now after the most recent news that just happened. 75 people have lost their jobs in 2021 when it comes to WWE and their backstage personnel and professional wrestlers. I think that is an outlandish and outrageous number of people that have lost their jobs over the years. Just over this year alone. Because there's been there's been mass firings and mass like releases and like every year they're spring cleaning and whatnot. But it never really got past like, you know, 15, 20 people. But this has been ongoing since January, really. But it got worse when April and June hit, and then July hit, and then, I don't know. I think the the start of the tip of the iceberg for me um, was the random releases of Aleister Black, now known as Malachi Black on AEW, and The Fiend Bray Wyatt, because uh, Black was just starting a new character for a new promo, or like a, a production of some sort on SmackDown and then the very next week he's let go. And then Bray Wyatt, that was, that still agitates me because there's so many sides to the, so many sides to the die when it comes to that um, situation there because like the reason for Bray Wyatt was also because of budget cuts but that doesn't make any sense because one, Bray Wyatt was a main event player, he made the company huge amounts of money, that his merchandise sales were always crazy off the charts and everything. Uh, he was also set to make his return in August, and they released him July 31st. To me, that sounded really fishy and really odd, that that just happened out of nowhere. Um, yeah, that was kind of the start of this, I guess you say, uh, iceberg of where I uh, stand on this company right now. Um, and then this past Friday, there was 12 NXT superstars released just out of nowhere with really no explanation and made a lot of people, including myself, wonder if it was because they were trying to save money just to keep Adam Cole with the company. But later on, that was not the true source, supposedly. But then later on, it came out that they're planning on to revamp, um... NXT because they supposedly uh, lost the war to AEW even though there wasn't really a war to begin with. It was just Vince being Vince. And they're planned on revamping the whole um, uh, show, the logo, rebranding the whole thing, the changing the whole aspect and whatnot. And it wasn't really clear what they were going to do until the morning, this morning, or the morning of this recording. Pretty much, I found out that they are planning on to go back to the old format of developmental. Pretty much back to like the OVW days, and they're not gonna hire no more people over the ages of 30, no more, as and I quote, no more midgets, and they're wanting more bigger people, main event looking people, main, main character, uh, main character-esque kind of people and everything and like it back in the day it worked for a couple people like a handful of people like I would say like Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Randy Orton, Dave Batista um, because o OVW did produce some pretty good wrestlers back in the day but I mean not many if my memory can hold up right not many of them are really around anymore. That has been on my mind all day and it's really has discouraged me to the point to where I personally myself don't think I want to waste my time and waste the drive to actually cover WWE related 
events or just support them in any way, shape, or form. It's just, it's discouraging, it's disappointing, and I would have loads of anger right now, but I am completely, I would say completely drained of anger when it comes to that. It's hard to explain, because I've had the same feeling before with this company, but it was nothing to do with, like, the massive amounts of releases today and the uh, rebranding and wanting to pretty much go back 20 years to help fix things today with ideas 20 years ago that probably don't work now. Um, it was more related to, I guess, like a, a single incident. I was more of a fanboy. I was more of a child. Yeah, I was a bit more biased when that came out and that went down. I actually stopped watching. WWE for at least six months. I think I started watching Impact more, but that was also the, kind of the same time that Impact was about to hit the decline. This, I feel like, is a whole different scenario, a whole different story, and it's hurting a lot of employees or ex-employees now who, this is their livelihood, this is the jobs that they have to pay for their bills and everything, and they're just getting let go. I mean, I guess one argument you can say for all these cuts right now is that WWE's roster is a bit oversaturated, which it kinda is, but I mean, at the same time, it's 75 people in one year. That's, that's insane. Not to mention, like, their viewership and the ratings have plummeted so far down like they were like in three millions and almost four millions like three years ago and now they are almost not surpassing a million views and i know covid had a huge play into that because you know the no fans and everything but with the crowds back it's still not it's still declining or staying steady at like right above a million. Like I don't even watch the product most of the time. I keep track of it, I follow it. There's a couple people I follow on social media that help, uh, I guess, me keep track of it and everything. They kind of, I guess, go through the torture for me, I guess. I know one guy quit watching WWE product completely because he just couldn't handle it anymore. To so shout out to you, authors of wrestling. Um, but I feel like I am about to join that sailboat with you, author, because it's it's getting it's getting to the point to where I almost can't handle this much bullshit with one company. And it's very very disappointing for me to say that because I've technically supported and enjoyed wrestling from this company since 2003. And the only, I guess, good thing that really comes out of this is that there is an alternative um, to watch nowadays, which I guess brings me to my, I guess, tip of the iceberg of this video. Um, I've expressed my thoughts. I personally would not like to continue watching WWE products because it's it's just too much and it's not enjoyable anymore but I would also enjoy to cover more AEW uh, pay-per-views myself I know that my some of my cohorts like Krieger would probably not really enjoy that because he doesn't he's expressed to me that he's not really a fan of AEW because he just sees it as like a, a giant live-action indie show which I mean I can kinda see that point but at the same time I kind of am like, I'd rather watch something that is actually entertaining versus the same three matches that's happened seven weeks in a row. Point being is that I'm going to leave this video on this note. I'm going to let you guys decide. I'm going to let you guys uh, decide whether or not if we should continue to cover... Um, WWE pay-per-views and just covering wrestling events with WWE in general should be, or should we just sell that ship and 
start covering AEW instead, and so that we can just focus on one wrestling promotion instead of two at the same time. I mean, in the end, like, I feel like we're probably just gonna pick one and everything, but, and I know that SummerSlam is literally right around the corner, and I talked to Krieger about covering it and everything, and he said he'd do it as long as I would want to do it. What do you guys think? Am I just overreacting and making a bigger deal out of this, or am I, I guess, not in the wrong for actually breaking my silence as to why we haven't covered wrestling events and we should just continue or whatever? It's, it's, it's a weird standstill. It's honestly really weird talking about this right now. And putting out to the public because I don't think I've I don't think I've actually ever done done something like this before, in a I guess calm format like this. I mean, what do you guys think? Should we keep covering WWE pay per views, or should we just let that um, ship sink and sell off to a different promotion? I mean, I know some people out there I'm friends with would say completely drop WWE, but uh, I don't know. I just know that some of the viewership on this channel does come from professional wrestling and whether or not it's AEW or WWE shows. That's just where I personally stand right now. This is Mike Check 95 signing out of this video and I guess either if you guys want to share your voice on this topic and what we should do, let us know. Again, if we don't get much of a response then I guess so guys will see our uh, decision from here. So, yeah.